Hey, what's up guys? In this video, I'm going to teach you guys how to properly calibrate your mousetrap vehicle to significantly improve your accuracy. Before we get into the video, I just want to direct you guys to that subscriber count. And that's right, we hit over 69 subscribers. Now, if you're as immature as I am, you would know that this is the greatest achievement in all of YouTube history. But on a more serious note, thank you everyone for subscribing to the channel and thank, thank you to everyone who purchased one of the kits I made and started selling. You're, you're really helping out the channel and I look forward to your future patronage. Well, that's it, let's get right into the video. All right guys, so in this video, I'm going to be using my expert mousetrap vehicle kit as a reference for teaching guys how to uh, calibrate your car. And the things I'm gonna talk about are not only relevant to this kit, they'll also be relevant for any other type of mousetrap car you build like this one right here. And I'm just gonna go into how I aim my car, how I set up braking and do all of that to get the most consistent results. All right, let's begin by talking about the way I actually wind this car. And this part is sort of specific to it, but I'll try and relate it back to your car. So the way this vehicle works is that this string is attached to this axle. And if you watched all my other videos regarding this vehicle, that actually allows this a mousetrap car to oscillate until it actually stops with zero friction and that allows for a perfect break but besides that the way i actually rotate it is if you look at this wheel right here i have it marked and this position is marked at zero and the way i measure the amount of rotations i put on this back axle is i just simply count every rotation so oops, did i just miss it all right let's so one rotation two rotation, three rotation, and I would do it until I have the number of rotations or rotations on this wheel that would take me all the way down to, let me show you guys, target set up at 10 meters. Yeah. So I would do that until I got the number of rotations of string on this axle until I got to 10 meters. And you can do this by simply calculating the circumference of your wheel and dividing the distance that your car needs to travel divided by the circumference of your wheel. And that should give you roughly the number of rotations on your drive axle that you want to get onto your, to get your car all the way to your um, target point. Now for other vehicles, it's going to be a little different because you won't necessarily be having your string attached to your axle. Instead, it will be something like this where it's free hanging and then you use some sort of mechanism to connect it to your drive axle. In this case, you actually wanna have a specific number of rotations you have on every single run. And the reason you actually wanna do this is because your car will then be traveling at the same speed every single time, regardless of what distance you're going. And that's going to help reduce a lot of the variability you may experience with your vehicle. All right, so something specific that I wanna bring up regarding the expert mousetrap vehicle kit is that when you're working with an oscillation type of braking and you only need to use partial a partial amount of the entire length of your string, something you can actually do is take your excess string and wrap it around your lever and doing so will help reduce the amount of string that is actually being, or not actually pulled, but the amount of string your lever arm has to work with. And what this does is, is it decreases the amount of distance your arm needs to snap until it actually starts powering your drive axle. So for example, if I, so when, the, when I have the string here and I set my mousetrap, one second, all right, it's set. So when I hit this trigger, all right, the mouse trap, the arm jumped up a little bit and then it started being able to pull it. But if I take off all the string, one second, please bear with me for, for a second. Okay, let's say this is where my arm was after I put all my wands in it. And then I set my mouse trap. okay? So I set it and now let me launch it. Okay, you see that? That's a problem you want to avoid because when something like this happens, uh, your car can sometimes jerk or move and that can 
that can mess up the aiming and all the time and effort you put into adjusting it and calibrating it and all of that. So you just want to avoid doing that because it'll help you in the long run with your accuracy. All right, guys, so I'm gonna show you guys how I aim my mousetrap vehicle and it's not really that expensive here. I have like a styrene sheet and if you buy some of my kits, they will come with a styrene sheet. You don't have to use styrene, you can use cardboard, you can use car stock, you can use whatever you want but I just used styrene because I had some laying around. But the way I actually aim it is I have a target block and this target block right there, let me zoom in, can you see it? All right, it's that orange and, not orange, the red and yellow thing at the 10 meter mark. And the way I actually aim it, let me take the camera off the stand. The way I actually aim it is I look through these two holes, come on, focus. All right, so I have, I look through this hole and this other hole until I get a perfect alignment. Let me see if I can show you guys that. Look, all right. So I'm looking through both slits of these two styrene pieces and I sort of adjust it until I get this car perfectly covering the red and yellow portion of it. Now, if you make thinner slits, you'll get more accuracy with this type of aiming. But I just want to show you guys that this is something that's really cheap, really inexpensive, and something that you could definitely utilize to help improve your calibration, aiming, and accuracy as a whole. So, yeah. So, you don't have to use styrene. Let me zoom out. This is terrible focusing. All right. So, I have styrene here, one styrene sheet in the back of the car, one styrene in the front, and they have a little slit that you look through, and that's sort of a rudimentary scope or type of aiming device that you can implement into your car. All right, let's say you were running your car, and then your mouse trap car landed right here, but your target point was right here. What changes can you make onto this vehicle in order to get your car to be more accurate? Well, the first thing you want to do is you want to measure how far your target point is from the center line of the target. And you want to measure how, how far this target point is vertically. Is it vertically? It's either vertically or horizontally. So you want to get the horizontal distance from this point to the center line and the distance from these, this point on the center line to the target point. Now, first, let's, let me, let me show you guys what I mean. So I got this ruler right here, right? And then I'm going to put that ruler under the dowel rod where it would be measured. And I'm going to measure until we get to the center line of this target point. Now this is roughly 11 centimeters. So it's not that bad, not great, not that bad either. But now if we, oh, okay. Now if we just, uh, extrapolate where this position is on this center line. It's roughly right here. So if we take a ruler and measure from the target point to roughly right here, it's about six centimeters. Now, now that we know this is 11 centimeters too far to the left, let me show you guys perspective. This car is 11 centimeters too, too far to the left and it traveled six or seven centimeters too short, I don't remember, but either six or seven. So the way you wanna counteract this is that if you had the aiming block, let's say that you had the aiming block initially on the target point when this happened. The, the, what the thing you wanna do is you wanna take this distance from the target point to the center line in our case, it was 11 centimeters. And you wanna add that to the opposite side of the car. So this car is on the left side. It's on the left side of the track. We want it to turn, become more, on, more towards the right side. So we're going to take, again, the distance from the dowel rod to the center line and add that to the right side. So now we would take our ruler and measure that. Let's say 70 is our baseline. We would go down to 59, because that's 11 centimeters away from 10. Now that we fixed our target point, we fixed the left to right accuracy of our car. Now we're going to focus on getting our car all the way to 10 meters. So again, just to reiterate, we had our car stop six centimeters short of 10 meters. So when we go back to our drive axle, we want to add an extra six centimeters of string winds not six centimeters, six centimeters worth of circumference. So this, let's say the circumference of this wheel is 20 centimeters. 
So we would want to add 6, six twentieths of a rotation to this wheel from where we had it previously in order to get it to 10 meters. Let's just say for purposes of, the, of an example, let's say we had 10 rotations on this wheel, causing this car to stop six centimeters short of this target point. What we would wanna do is instead of just 10 rotations, you would wanna do 10 and 6 20th rotations in order to get our car to get perfectly to 10 meters. Now this is for oscillation. If you're doing something with a wing nut, then you would want to decrease the the braking setting of your wing nut by six twentieths of a rotation in order to in order to get your car perfectly to 10 meters now the reason you're you're removing six uh six twentieths of a rotation instead of adding six twentieths of a rotation is because your wing nut needs a little bit more time in order to actually engage. So by decreasing rotations, you're giving your wing nut more time or more distance until it fully engages. And that will help get you closer to 10 meters. Again, I hope this helped you. And if you need any deeper explanations or you're having some troubles, then let me know in the comments and I'll get to it as fast as possible. If you enjoyed the video, please be sure to hit the like button. And if you haven't already, hit the subscribe button. Our next sub count goal is 420 subscribers, the second greatest achievement in all of YouTube history. But with that said, thank you for watching. I'll catch you guys next time. Stay on phase.